breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty. Mornings on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. Y'all are going to have to calm me down. I found a new product I'm so excited about, Aaron. <laughs> Mike, I'm going to hurt you. I say, oh, but I love I love Nutella mixed into my banana. Good. A lot of people love Nutella with bananas. I This is Aaron. I, I saw this. You posted this on Facebook. And first of all, I'm like, seriously, this looks like. This looks like uh, something Mattel did. Ronco. Remember Ron- the Ron- Ron- yeah. Ronco products, <laughs> the whatever fishing, it was? What was that? Pocket Fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> this is the stupidest gadget I have ever well, seen in my like life. This is like a 30-minute video, first of all. Yes. Trying to in- squish some Nutella into the in- insides of a banana. It's called a banana loca. And loca means crazy. So I understand why they called it that because this is the stupid. Unfriend me if you like a banana loca. Go to my Facebook, unfriend me. We're no longer friends. If you think this banana loca is a good idea. I couldn't even watch the whole video. It's got a piece, a little piece gadget that's, you know, like the size of a stapler. It won't fit in a drawer, a kitchen drawer. It's too big for that. And it's got a long pole on the end of it that you, you shoot. Or a banana you, length pole. Yeah. Not a, not you put that inside the banana. You have to straighten out the banana on this thing. And then you put this little core inside the banana, and it sucks out the inside ring of the banana only. Right. You have to, first of all, you have to suck out the innards. Yeah, of the banana. That's not going to work. It looks real pretty on the video, but it's not going to work. We all know <laughs> that's not going to work. And then in the other gadget, you spoon your Nutella into this little cup thingy, and then you put the top on the cup thingy, and then you press it down, and it shoots Nutella into the center of the banana. And you still have to peel it. And now, then, now, yeah. the, now you've got to peel it with Nutella stuck in it. And you can tell when and he cuts lost, up the banana. Oh, look, it already broke. It already broke. It, yes. It, when he cuts the banana, you can tell <laughs> this does not work. <laughs> no. I, I've, I've seen uh, YouTube reviewers uh, uh, try and use it, and it, it, it doesn't work. It, it, it either breaks or explodes the banana every time. What on earth who on earth thought this was going to be a good idea? And here's the rub. I thought, oh, 19 bucks. Oh, look, bucks. now it's making a mess. He's trying to pick up the... Yes. He can't even pick up the banana. It is a disaster. falling apart and oozing and dripping Nutella all over. This is ridiculous. I thought maybe it's nine ninety nine, maybe nineteen ninety nine. dollars Uh-uh. So 60, you can't... $67. Damn near $70 for, for the pleasure of, of well, having Well, you know it'll be Nutella 70 by injector. the time you add shipping and... Look, you can't just dip your banana into a cup of Nutella or into the jar of Nutella. A spoon. Yeah, there, there's a spoon for this. <laughs> Good gosh. Spoon your Nutella, take a bite of your banana, and put your spoonful in it. The second you get a spoonful of Nutella and you're putting it into a machine to then put into a banana, that's you've lost it. Yes. You've lost your mind. Uh, <laughs> Ruben, am You're I creating wrong? creating more work and more stupidity. Right. Wasting more. I couldn't even finish the video. It's too damn long. Oh, my God. And it says, no mess, easy to clean. <laughs> Does that thing look easy to clean? No, and once you're done, you got to take it apart and then wash <laughs> 10 different parts yes. to this machine. And then you have, like, this wet banana noodle that you have to deal with. You don't want to eat that. So you're wasting banana. It's a bad product. Somebody was, Ruben, I apologize for this. Somebody was so high when they invented this. <laughs> they were so high. They went, this will be a big big. seller. Yeah. Watch this. How much time do you think they tried to engineer this? Oh, and they got a patent for it. You know that. And, a- and this is the final product. What about all the ones that didn't work? <laughs> yeah, this is. Before this one that doesn't work. This is the final result of an engineering degree in drugs. <laughs> oh, period. Oh, man. I, I just see this little gadget yeah, being used for other things, and I, this is not job. it. I'm. The, the, this is awful. And again, it's on my Facebook. If you want to, if you want to waste 10, 12 minutes of your day of your life, and you think this is a great product, please unfriend me. 
please, because you're a moron. How long is the tutorial video you were watching, Mike? I can't. I I I, I, I don't. I don't know. I didn't get too, to the end. Too long. Yeah. Too too long. <laughs> I watched it. I think it's about four four or five minutes or that's something. That's like too that. long. Yeah, it's, that's way too I could, long. I could have a banana have with Nutella on it <laughs> done in four minutes. Well, with four a spoon. Banana, four bananas at yeah. that point. I, how these things get through. I'll never know. And somebody's paying $67 for this piece of crap? Certainly not. I hope not. <laughs> it's on Amazon. Add it. Only two left in stock. I better buy one. Oh, my God. Only two left. <laughs> Are you uh, out of... Th they, they made three of them. Probably, yeah. You know how Amazon puts that up. Only one left, so you go buy it. Yeah. Probably, right. probably all the sales are from YouTube reviewers so they can get a video showing how it doesn't work. That probably is exactly <laughs> it. I mean, there's like eight different parts to this thing. you got to go clean when you're done. This is ridiculous. Okay, on your no-buy challenge, would that be on your no-buy challenge? Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> never oh, buying this. If I ever buy this, find me a home. Find me a home in a nice room somewhere, nice cozy bed, because I'm going to need it. Because uh, I've lost 15, my damn mind. A 15-step series on oh. how to insert Nutella into a banana. Oh, how somebody got this through the process. Please, I'm hoping this wasn't like Shark Tank thing. I think it was. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm pretty sure it was a Shark oh, Tank thing. They must have all been smoking some weed that night. <laughs> somebody was on how, how, I'm, I'm changing gears. How bad is it in California when even the left libtards are going, okay, this, is, this, is, this has gotten ridiculous. Got to roll this one back. Yeah. <laughs> this has gotten ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that after sports. 1017 FM, 710keel.com. Back with more of Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. So in California, crime it was so bad that they said, you know what, we're gonna, we're, we've got jail overcrowding and, and, and we're being mean to criminals. <laughs> so they're gonna soften the penalty. Oh, they softened the penalties mm -hmm. for nonviolent felonies like fraud and shoplifting to make them misdemeanors. Yep. Uh, now you have to shoplift like six thousand dollars worth of stuff. Mm -hmm. Where before, what was the felony? Was what was it? Five hundred, six hundred dollars? I don't know. I'm it was, not sure. It was, but Much now lower. it's it's so it's actually led to organized retail theft. Mm -hmm. I mean these 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 groups go into and just are stealing. Well, I mean, we've all seen stories. Companies are going. Yes. I'm not going in there. We're not going in this neighborhood. And, we're and not, businesses we're not have closed. We're, yeah, we're, we're leaving. Some drug stores have decided to shut down. Grocery stores. Mm -hmm. going, it, it, we, can't, we can't make a living here. We, we cannot function and do business. <sighs> and that was all because of uh, Proposition 47. Right. Um, was passed in California a year or two ago. And that resulted in the changes where thieves weren't really getting punished. And stores were not able to enforce people just walking out with goods. Now, California has decided we <laughs> might want to roll that so back. bad. So they're now putting a, re a rollback of Prop 47 on the ballot in November. And voters will be going to the polls in November to change it back. So that you can punish these shoplifters and these massive rings um, will stop. Mm. Now... In, in, the, in this article in the Washington Examiner, uh, I, I do like the, the line that says, laws are only as good as the prosecutors who are enforcing them. And in Oakland and Los Angeles, uh, the DAs are up for, you know, real. In fact, they're, they've issued a recall in Oakland mm -hmm. uh, for Alameda County DA Pamela Price. She's the one <laughs> that says... Well, you know, a DA really doesn't have any effect on crime. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pamela Price is trying to throw that monkey on somebody else's back for not prosecuting criminals. 
and saying she doesn't have an effect on crime. That's like, I don't know, a a school board member saying there's no such thing as a failing school. Mm. Mm. Let's, let's, Let's hold on a second. Stop smoking whatever you're smoking and let's take a look at reality. Right. What troubles me, Mikey Poo? Did I just call you Mikey Poo? It's okay. Is that you've called me worse? What typically happens in California ultimately flows and makes its well, way across the country. Used to, not so much anymore. Aaron. I'm hoping we've come to our senses because and realize this is nuts. Because even it, it's gotten so bad. Even California is like, we no, no, we can't live like this. Yeah. For those that are remaining, right? Because most of them are going. You know what? The hell with y'all. A lot of the big money people are moving out of state. You can have it. They're finding homes elsewhere, and maybe they go to California to work occasionally, (laughs) but they're going to reside somewhere else. Or the ones with any sense are going to Texas or Florida, Mm -hmm. you know, and... and, uh, It's just silly. Now, Now we've had to have two elections. We had to have the election to pass Prop 47, and now we're going to have an election to roll it back. That costs a little bit of money. Please make it make sense to me how going soft on criminals and crime is a good idea ever. How does that, what what possible goal do you have? None. No. Oh, you have a goal. Well, you do. There is a goal. Utter Uh. chaos. And, you know, my my point for this is if you take, in, in the big scheme of things, when a young child does something bad at age 12 or 13 or 14, if you really whop them upside the head hard where they know there are strong consequences, I better stop this behavior. And I don't mean physically assault them. I'm just, it's a metaphor. You know what? You might impact them. But if you just get a little, little tap on the wrist and you go back home to mom and daddy and you just don't do this again... Well, hey, I got away with it. When we were talking about education, it, Aaron, it goes back to parents. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, I guarantee you, the parents of these thugs are going, well, not my baby. Yeah. What are you doing? And, you know, there are there are great parents out there who, if your kid gets in trouble, gets picked up by the police and has done something bad, not only will you face the music in court... But you're going to face well, the music absolutely. at home, too. If I got in trouble at school, I knew I had more coming when I got oh, home. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it would be even harsher probably at home. I guarantee you my mom wasn't at the school going, why are you punishing my son? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. We got in just as much trouble at the house, oh, I promise you. Yes. Oh. Congressman Mike Johnson uh, talked with us yesterday. In fact, some of his comments make national headlines. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, find out what he said coming up at uh, about 740. 1017 FM, 710 Kiel. Let's get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. By the way, we talked with uh, Mike Johnson Yesterday, made comments that made the national news right here on our show. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Find out what he said right after the break. Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Keel, and on the free Keel app. Now, more breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. We're waiting to be patched. We're waiting to be patched through to the Speaker of the House. I love it. Louisiana Congressman Mike Johnson. Thanks, Thanks, man. (laughs) (laughs) Mike and McCarty. Uh, We did get some uh, questions on the Shreveport Security Systems message board that uh, uh, we will get to, hopefully. Uh, When we get uh, the speaker on the phone waiting on Ruben to let us know. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's been under some criticism and and, and uh, I want to address some of that. Speaker, good morning. Hey, guys. How are y'all doing? Good. Wonderful. Thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Mm-hmm. I, I, got a, I got a two-parter. Let me ask you a kind of a tough question starting off with because uh, we asked uh, some listeners to submit questions for the Speaker of the House. Um, one is on border security. 
and, and why you gave in on border security and on Ukraine funding. How would you, I, I think I know the answer to these questions, but I, I want you to address those for our listeners. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Look, those are huge uh, bits of misinformation. We never gave in on the border. We've been fighting on it every single day of this Congress. In fact, we've been fighting since Joe Biden walked into the Oval Office and started issuing executive orders to open it wide. Um, in the appropriations process, it came down to a binary choice. We, we had to, I mean, we fought all the way to the end. Remember, we passed H.R. 2, the Secure the Border Act, which is the most comprehensive border security measure ever passed by Congress. Um, it's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk in the Senate the whole time, over a year now, 13 months it's been sitting on his desk. See, here's the problem what everybody has to remember. We have the smallest majority in only one chamber of Congress. Absolutely. History. I have a one-vote margin, right? Right. So I can pass things in the House, but it doesn't mean it's going to become law because the progressive Democrats run the White House and the Senate. And so we sent over our legislation. We passed resolutions. We impeached Secretary Mayorkas at Department of Homeland Security. First time a cabinet secretary has been impeached in the history of the United States. We have been fighting tooth and nail. But the problem was at the very end, when we got down to the deadline of whether to fund the government or not, it came down to a binary choice. Chuck Schumer and the Democrats and, and Joe Biden dared us. They wanted us to not fund the government and shut it down because they knew it would be uh, blamed on Republicans. It would be very painful to the American people. And then that would that would make sure that we lost the House majority, the narrow majority that we have in November. We couldn't do that, obviously. we got to grow the majority, win back the Senate and put Donald Trump in the White House. We're not going to be able to save the country. And so that's what it came down to. Nobody abandoned the border. We're still fighting on it every single day. But at the end of the day, here's the, here's the truth. The president has to be, you have to have a president who is willing to enforce federal immigration law. And Joe Biden simply won't. Even if he signed our legislation into law, they'd ignore it. We already know that. So we got to have an election cycle to fix this thing. On another subject, Israel is under, under fire uh, today for the attack in, in Rafah. You invited Benjamin Netanyahu to speak. Um, the Democrats have kind of, re I don't know where we stand on, on that happening. Where, it, where are we on that? And, and what does Israel need to do now? Well, I suppose the hand of Chuck Schumer, uh, they've been, I had a letter uh, going back to mid-March uh, to invite Prime Minister Netanyahu to come and speak to a joint session of Congress. I think it's very important and historic for him to come and do that, to give us the bird's eye view of what's going on in Israel, to, um, to address some of the criticism. I'm a big supporter of Israel, as everybody knows, because I think we have many reasons and obligations to do that. Uh, but Chuck Schumer has been trying to play both sides. I mean, the Biden administration not only has projected weakness on the world stage and gotten us into all these hot wars, um, they've also been trying to appease Iran and criticize Israel. So uh, Schumer was trying to play politics with it. I sent him the draft letter. It has to be signed by the Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader to have a joint address to Congress. Uh, sent it over to him in mid-March. He's been um, he's been dithering and not, not getting that done. So I called his bluff last week, said I would invite Netanyahu myself and just skip over him, send individual invitations to senators to join us if they wished, and all of them would, I'm sure, except for a handful. Uh, and so finally he relented. He got public pressure and agreed to co-sign the letter. So that, that invitation is going out. I, I expect that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu will come soon. I'm, I'm scheduled to speak with him again in about an hour. Um, by telephone. And when I spoke with him last week, he was anxious to come and, and speak with us. So I expect it will happen soon. Are you concerned th about the criticism of Israel that they have violated human rights? Does that trouble you some that, you know, that's a worldwide story today? Listen, the, the war ongoing should trouble every freedom loving person around the world. Remember, Hamas is a terrorist organization, a proxy of Iran. And on, on that fateful day, October 7th, the tragic day. Who they, attacked uh, Israel they, first? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. They, Everybody they conveniently it. seems to forget this fact. Right. Raped women and children, cooked uh, infant uh, Jewish babies in ovens. I'm not even going to go into all the details on the radio. It's it's too horrific to recount this morning. But it was a, a terrible thing. They killed more Jews than it, on any day since the Holocaust. They are the aggressors. They are the dark side of this. And Israel is trying to defend themselves and actually defend their very existence as a nation right now. The problem is the terrorists have embedded themselves within civilian populations. And now they're all concentrated in Rafah, which is the southern part of Gaza. 
um, the, the, the Israeli army is doing a, a nearly impossible job in trying to uh, rid themselves of the terrorists who want to who want to take them out as a nation. And, and, and so it's a very dangerous, serious situation. And civilian casualties have um, been occasioned there, and it's, tr- it's a great tragedy. I think that Netanyahu himself has lamented that in the last 24 hours. Um, but it's an impossible situation. And what the international community needs to do, including the United States, is not try to micromanage what they're doing there. I mean, for crying out loud, the International Criminal Court, which is a, a bogus organization, has talked about issuing arrest warrants for the leaders of Israel in the middle of a war. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's madness, and we need to stand by our ally and and, uh, and insist that, that this be done quickly so that peace can be brought about. You, you made the comment just a moment ago, Speaker, that we need to elect our way out of this. The only way we're going to change is to change the administration. Uh, one of our one of our listeners says, "Look, my question is concerning the last election. What are the chances that this won't happen again? Should I be concerned?" We well, know that's a big we- question. Yeah. Well, election security is on is on is top of mind for almost every American. I mean, I, look, I've been in the last five and a half months, guys. I've been all over the country uh, campaigning for Republican members and candidates. No, no matter where I am, the message is the same. America's in decline. The commander in chief, Joe Biden, is at the wheel on every major issue. Uh, he's been an abject failure. The border, you know, the rising cost of living and crime and, and you know, our, our standing on the world stage, all of it. And, and there's going to be a big wave election. I genuinely believe that. But we've got to be able to trust that it's, it's fair and free and, and safe. I think it will be. There's been an extraordinary amount of work done in almost all the states across the country to ensure election security. There's a small handful of states that we're watching very closely, but you'll have greater attention paid to that in these jurisdictions than ever before. You're going to have poll watchers and precinct captains and small armies of lawyers ready to litigate if they need to do it. Um, you're, You're going to have a lot of eyes on it to ensure that the abuses of the 2020 election, for example, can never happen again. We're, 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 confident in that and i think it will happen there'll be controversies there always are but i think that you'll have a fair election that can be counted on you've, you've heard president trump on the campaign stump the last couple of weeks his new phrase is uh, too big to rig right we, we have to have a, an early turnout a, a big turnout i think we will around the country to ensure that even if there are any hijinks it's not enough to change the outcome of the election and one of the big things we've got to do is make sure all these illegals who are in the country cannot vote in that election and I've been pushing that the last couple of weeks. We introduced we introduced legislation to ensure that can't happen, and that'll be we'll be passing that through the House when we get back um, this week. Speaking of elections, the congressional map in Louisiana, the Supreme Court has ordered Louisiana to use the congressional map with the two black majority districts, which means District Six will stretch from Shreveport to Baton Rouge. How will the folks that live in that portion of Caddo, DeSoto Parish ever be represented by a congressman from this area? Is this map the right thing to do? It's not. Look, it it remains my belief that the congressional maps that we have now that were passed under the 2020 census are fully constitutional and they should be used this fall as well. Um, But the Supreme Court suspended the lower court's decision. And so now. We have to fight to win in these these newly drawn districts. I don't think these new districts will last more than a one, a, a single two year cycle. Um, but this is what we have. And to your point, Aaron, it's terrible because under this new map, you got many voters um, in the Shreveport area and and as you pointed out, North Dakota that are, they're going to be voting for a congressman that will all but likely reside in Baton Rouge, and that's just wrong. I mean, that's you know four hours south of us, right? So. As the House Speaker, it, it's, it's my responsibility to do everything in my power to maintain and grow the House Republican majority, and we're doing that. And so I'm trying to encourage all of our colleagues here, my, my, my four Republican colleagues and friends, to run strong in the, in the new districts and ensure that they can, um, they can get over the, the finish line and, and we can keep our seats because it's really important. And how do you, Mike, excuse me, Speaker Johnson, how do you represent from Union Parish at the top of the state to Calcasieu Parish, nearly to the coastline. How can you possibly do that? Well, I, you know, over 16 uh, parishes, it's a lot of uh, territory to cover, about a third of the state by land area. Um, but that's the way the districts are drawn. You know, each of us represent about a little less than 800,000 uh, Louisianians. And that was the way that they apportioned it. And so we do it. We just got to be everywhere all the time. 
Look, I, this is really important to to think about. Um, you know, we we've got a really really strong congressional delegation in the Congress. There's only six of us from Louisiana: five Republicans, one Democrat. And among our five Republicans in the House, think about this: we currently have the Speaker of the House, that's me, the Majority Leader, Steve Scalise. Scalise. That's the first time in history that those two top positions have been elected from the same state ever. We've got a key appropriator, Julia Ledlow. We've got a leader on transportation infrastructure and natural resources, Garrett Grays. We've got a leader on armed services and homeland security, um, Clay Higgins. I mean, this is – it's an incredible group and, and arguably the most powerful congressional delegation in all of the United States. And so it's really important that, that they all fight hard and win in those districts and we return that group to Louisiana because we are punching – way, way above our weight limit. President Biden today on, on another subject is set to announce um, ways to modernize our electric grid so that we can be ready for clean energy and fewer outages. Um, I, I hear into this lots of money to be spent, um, lots of oil jobs to be lost. Right. Am killing I wrong? The, killing the fossil fuel industry. <laughs> Am I wrong? What's no, coming? Your, your instinct, your instinct is exactly right. It's utter madness. If you are going to get out a piece of paper and say, huh, how can we destroy a nation's economy and national security? Um, <sighs> oh, let's begin by declaring war on its, on its energy industry, you know, fossil fuels, oil and gas. Um, that's exactly what Joe Biden has done. And this boondoggle about this, you know, radical green energy agenda is madness. I mean, Pete Buttigieg got embarrassed on CBS this weekend because he went into, you know, friendly territory for him and was asked a very simple question. Gee whiz, there's like billions and billions and billions of taxpayer dollars have been devoted to building these like electric charging stations around the country. And you're supposed to build like, you know, a thousand of them. And so far, let's see, you built eight. Eight of them. <laughs> and he goes, he smiles and says, oh, it's very complicated. I mean, give me a break. What they're trying to hoist on the American people is something that consumers don't even want. And meanwhile, they are, they are fueling Vladimir Putin's war machine. Because, look, every time you, you pause an export of liquefied natural gas off the coast of Louisiana and Texas, which Joe Biden has done by executive order, you make Europe and all of our allies in the other parts of the world have to go to Vladimir Putin to get their natural gas. I mean, it's just absolute madness. I've asked the president himself about this in the Oval Office. I asked President Biden, why would you do that? And he looked at me as though he didn't realize he had. He, he, <laughs> I think they're giving him executive orders to sign, and he doesn't even understand the implications of it. It is just crazy, crazy. And that's why there's going to be a massive change in this election cycle in November. And President Trump is going to bring us back to energy dominance again. That's exactly what we achieved together under his first couple of years in office we're going to do that again mike how long have you been speaker now how long's it been are you counting the days oh goodness uh, six months six months yeah biggest, like six years in some yeah. biggest surprise since you took over uh the scope of the of the responsibility i mean the speaker of the house in the modern era has an almost impossible scope of things to do it takes 24 hours every single day i haven't had a break since october 25th I haven't been alone since October 25th. You know, it's it's a full-time thing. I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm honored. It's the honor of my life, obviously. And we're in uh, very, very serious times as a nation. I'm very clear-minded and clear-eyed about where we need to go, what we need to do to, to make America uh, extraordinary and great again. And we're going to do that. But, you know, Newt Gingrich posted an op-ed two weeks ago and says, Speaker Johnson has the most challenging speakership since the uh, Civil War yes. 60 years ago. You know, I called him. I said, Newt, is this some kind of twisted way of encouraging me and we laughed about it he said no no he said did you did you read the rest of the piece right he said, i said you're doing an excellent job he said it's just the job is almost impossible i said not impossible though we'll get it done have we you will. and marjorie I mean, taylor green kissed and made up oh good grief you know me i don't i don't carry grudges i don't you know i don't keep a record of wrongs i went up to her right after her ridiculous tirade and said you know what still gotta work together marjorie remember I, I can We're on the same side. One vote. We're on the same side, right? Yeah. How about training some of that energy against the Democrats? You know, um, she. It's look. It, this is all going to work out. I spend half my day as Speaker of the House, and the other half as a mental health counselor. And I sit down with <laughs> members, <laughs> work everybody through their issues. You know, we're going to get this done. We have to deliver for the American people. This is not a game, and the stakes are too high mm -hmm. to fool around. And and I won't be. Well, let me put on my dad hat for a moment and congratulate you on your daughter's graduation. One from Louisiana Tech this past weekend. 
Congratulations. Uh, we have had, we're in the busiest cycle for the Johnson family. Okay, so we had the Benton High School graduation, I think, two weeks ago for mm-hmm. Jack. He's going to the he's going to the Naval Academy nice. at the end of next month. Um, Abby just graduated tech. She's going to start law school. And then Hannah has finished her second year of law school. And she's getting married June 8th because we didn't have enough going on in the family, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. do you break and away and get to those events? Girl. You have to say, look, these are family events. I'm going to be there. I do. You know, you got to look, I'm a pro family guy. I got to live it. I'm, I'm going to be there first. But we're, 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 we're juggling a lot of things right now. But um, so far, so good. By God's grace, you know, it's, it's, um, it's all working out. We're blessed. Speaker, thank you so much for your time. We're praying for you, and I uh, think you're doing a great job. Thanks, brother. Appreciate y'all. Great to hear your voices. You bet. Thank you, Mike. Mike Johnson, uh, Louisiana Congressman, Speaker of the House, Mike and McCarty, 101.7 FM, 710keel.com. I read this article about Kennedy. We're going to talk about that later this hour, so I don't want to go real deep into it, but I was blown away at the response that Kennedy's office got when they canceled his article about transgender sports Mm -hmm. in Louisiana and Louisiana schools. Yep, he wrote an op-ed, and they put it up, published it, and then they pulled it down. They took it back down Mm -hmm. on online. He's hot and bothered. Well... Yeah, and when mm. when I read what some of the things that the uh, editor of the Shreveport Times said, Aaron, and as a journalist, you know, again, well, we're going to talk about that later yeah. this hour, so I don't want to go real deep because <sighs> over the weekend, we you know we went to Dallas, mm-hmm. we left Thursday, spent the weekend with uh, with our daughter, uh, Memorial Day weekend. And, and at one point on the weekend, I was painfully, Aaron, reminded of my failure as a father. Yeah. Yeah. We, we I, I, I think it was in the car after we left the movie, If, mm-hmm. which we went to see at the theater and loved it. Everybody says, great. I quoted airplane okay dina started laughing and and micah didn't get it didn't get it Mm. i said what airplane she goes is that a movie oh boy my daughter has never seen airplane airplane so then i had to talk about okay in the 70s there were all these disaster movies Mm mm-hmm Towering Inferno. Gosh, Airport, yeah. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Airport, which is what Airplane was based off sure. of. Uh, the Poseidon Adventure. You bet. Earthquake. I loved mean, they had all these disaster movies. They were great. That, uh, that were just so prevalent in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And Airplane was the first movie that I that I think of is the, one of the spoof films. Yes, yes. They became popular as well. Absolutely. Remember the mm-hmm. Hot Shots in oh, Hot Shots? Y- you bet. Part de. Uh, right. Yes. Um, but but I, I so I had to explain to her <laughs> first the the disaster movies. Of course, they did. She didn't get that. She never seen any of them. I never no. Wow. I remember reading the book, The Towering Inferno. Oh, absolutely. Those books were incredible. Yes. Riveting. They really were. And and uh so then Airplane was the was the spoof. You know? And and I started <laughs> And so funny. Because <laughs> we, we were talking oh, we got to talking about gladiators. That's what it was. And and there's a there's a scene in Sopranos because uh, Kirk Douglas was in, was it, what was, what was the name of the uh, uh, Gladiator movie that he was in back in the Ooh. 50s? Uh, oh, come on. Was it Ben-Hur? Re- no, it wasn't Ben-Hur, but it was, it was one of, you know. Okay. Oh, like I just that. went blank. Okay. I just went blank. We talked about it over the weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Sopranos, one of the characters, Ralph, said, you know, gladiators didn't have flat tops. 
Because <laughs> Kurt Russell had a very 50s yes. hairstyle, you know. And, Kurt uh, Russell or Kurt, Kurt I mean, Douglas? I uh, mean, Kurt Douglas. Okay. Kurt Douglas. Sorry, sorry. Uh, in, in the in the Gladiator movie. And so then I said, uh, you like movies about gladiators, Billy? You know? <laughs> so then I'm trying to explain that. And then I, Aaron, I got to thinking, that's another. You couldn't do that today. No, no. Because, Aaron, there are people who would defend that. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that Nambla. There's nothing wrong with men being, those are minor attracted people. Wow. Are we really headed that far? Headed? G- girl, we're Is it there. happening? Wow. We're there. Whew. You ever seen a grown man naked, Billy? I mean, mm. <laughs> we laughed at, you know, yes. and it's funny because of the absurdity of it. So but much in that airplane movie you couldn't do anymore. Unfortunately, today... It, 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 it's not absurd anymore. Right. It's it's here with us. It's uh, People are defending it. Oh. Excuse me, ma'am. I speak fluent jive. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't do that anymore. Oh, brother. <laughs> sure couldn't do that anymore. I forgot about that. And what made it even funnier, it was Mrs. Cleaver. Yeah, yeah. it was June Cleaver. June Cleaver. Oh, wow. You're right. <laughs> You're it was, right. It was actually the actress that played the mom on Leave Golly. It to Beaver. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I hope your daughter goes scene. back and watches it. Well, I wonder if would she the, would get any of it. That was going to be my next question. Would she? Would she get it? I don't know. Would would it would it be funny in 2024? To I mean, Robert, uh, Robert, Ruben, you've seen. Air, airplane, obviously. Yeah. Airplane and Airplane 2 and, uh, yeah. All of them, yeah. Spartacus, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Spartacus. Mm-hmm. Thank Kentucky you. Kentucky Fried Movie. Another oh, thing Kentucky that could be made Kentucky Fried today. Movie. Yes. Oh, my. I remember going to the movies at, at Midnight Movie at, at St. Vincent and, and watching either Mad Max or Kentucky Fried Movie. <laughs> I haven't seen either one of those. Isn't that and, terrible? And, and we made fun of all the people in line that were going to see the, uh, what was the other one? Uh, the weird one with the, the cross-dresser, the, oh, oh Rocky Horror, oh, Picture, Rocky Show. Horror Picture Show. Oh, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. seen that one a zillion times. I've never seen it. A zillion times. I've never seen it because of the people in line in 1975 <laughs> At the movie theater at midnight, they had a, they had a showing a long time ago. I think I was still a teenager at Robinson Film Center, and I won I won an award for best time warp. I won like I won like one of those vintage wind up robots. Did. Yeah, I could sing this entire movie. I went with the fishnet stockings. I went with the rice. I did it all. I was in college at the time, and we went over and over and over again. Uh, I regret uh, I, that. I, I but just got a text, Spartacus. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Oh man. I just man. went blank. I knew it. I just went blank. Mm. Unbelievable. So, but I, I got, and then there was another one that I was going to ask Ruben, and I and I can't remember what it was, but but would it, you know, if you've seen and and how it would translate to younger, mm. you know? But yeah. now Ruben, Ruben, he's kind of an old soul. He anyway. definitely is. Yeah, uh, you can you can say I'm just I'm a weirdo who likes old media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I I love that about you. Absolutely. But have you seen like the Poseidon Adventure and those old? Oh yeah, those old disaster movies. You have? Uh, there was the one where everybody was stuck in a ski lodge. Was it Ava- was it called Avalanche? Avalanche. Well, it was oh, Avalanche. I forgot about yeah. that one. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, that was a good one. Okay, that was a really good one. I'll have to go look at Poseidon it. Poseidon Adventure was probably one of the best. Yeah, good movie. I think Gene Hackman, gosh, and anything he was in, mm, excuse me, just mm-hmm. added some credibility to it. Oh, absolutely, so good. But anyway, I just when when she when my daughter told me she'd never seen Airplane, oh, I hope she oh. goes to watch it. I hope so. No, we know you couldn't make Blazing Saddles. Well, no, <laughs> never in a million years. I'm no. surprised they even show it anymore. They do. Oh, and Joy, one of our listeners, told me. You can't you can't get Song of the South on DVD. What? No. The Disney film Song of the South, you can't even order it. They don't even distribute it on DVD. And she said she has a copy that's a good 
of good quality. So do I. Uh, VHS, yeah. A VHS, yeah. Really? But I want, yeah. I went to. I, I found one online and ordered, but it was some bootleg copy that they just had. It was like, I, really, I paid for this? Oh no. Mm. Yeah. Don't understand. Brer Rabbit and Brer yeah. Bear and. Uh, Can't do it. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, uh, oh. speaking of cancel culture, John Kennedy, Senator, joining us coming up at, at about 840. He got canceled by USA Today. Find out why. Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Keel. More of Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Earlier this morning, you were talking about this no buy challenge. Mm-hmm. Now I like the concept. Okay, do you do I need it or do I want it? Right. Okay, I like that, and I should ask myself that more often. I agree with that, but I can tell you, I <laughs> I could not do this no buy challenge for a year. Got 50,000 people who've already signed up to do it. They're adding more. What you does, agree- it char- does it cost to sign up? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. What you agree- the irony there. <laughs> what you agree to do is to stop buying non-essential items. Okay. In fact, if you eat at lunch out every day or all the time, you're only allowed to eat lunch out once a month. But I just ordered five banana locas to Don't give his gift. Don't get me gifts. started with that. I just spent three hundred something dollars online for Don't get me banana st- locas. Started with that. That's that stupid gadget you hollow out a banana with, and then you fill it up with Nutella. You got eight pieces of the gadget to clean and wash afterwards. Oh, it's more than eight, I think. It's oh, ridiculous. Man, it's it ridiculous. takes thirty minutes. It's the stupidest gadget <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Why you bring that up again? <laughs> I don't know if so, I know. unfriend me if you want a banana loca or you have one. Unfriend me. <laughs> And how you convince Mark Cuban and that other dude to invest in that company is beyond me. They get three bucks for everyone sold, though. So for what it's worth, only three bucks out of out of a sixty. What is sixty seven dollars? Well, I have found that it's on the Banana Loca site. They sell for under thirty, but on Amazon they're sixty seven. So I, I I don't know what the discrepancy is, but yeah, that's the stupidest thing. But people are buying them, I guess. I guess it's been successful. I'm not sure. I think it's the dumbest thing on it. You know, there is a thing you can use instead of hollowing out a banana and then infusing it with Nutella. You could get a... Um, go Nutella in your, or Nutella? N- Nutella. Nutella? Yeah. Isn't it Nutella? I don't know. I'm asking. I'm not I, sure. Isn't it based on nuts? Like hazelnuts? Nutella? What I've is heard, it? I've heard both. Okay. So I, I really don't... I use both. But you know, there, there, there's something you could do instead of this gadget. You could go in your top drawer there in your kitchen and you could get out a spoon. And just, yeah. Take a bite yeah. of banana, spoonful of Nutella. We've had, spoons, just, we've had spoons for hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they fit in the drawer pretty yeah. easy. They fit in the dishwasher pretty easy. You don't have they to stack. find storage for it. This little gadget's big, like a like a stapler. It gun. looks like something Mattel would make, or or Ronco. Ronco for Christmas, yes. Ronco, everyone wants- Banana Rama. It looks I- like one of those Play Doh accessories. That, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> where are you going to store that? Uh, Unless you I, have a massive in, kitchen. In the garbage is where you need to store it. Yes. And not paying seventy dollars. <laughs> Stupidest thing on earth. But the no buy challenge is you commit for a year. Not to buy unnecessary stuff, and they're saying you're going to save five hundred bucks a month. Can you imagine no. if you agreed for for one year? Now you can replace your shampoo, you can replace your manly products or whatever you use uh, if they run out. My but you, my butt crack deodorant. Yeah, in case you're using that, <laughs> um, you can't Smell buy shoes, naked. clothing, accessories. <laughs> None of that stuff, no candles, no, you know, home decoration items. And the Christmas gifts you're going to buy at Christmas cannot exceed 20 so bucks. who came up with this? Is this Ralph Nader? Who came up with this? It's some group on Reddit. They got together as a way to fight inflation. They were looking for ways to battle inflation. And they thought, let's just see how many people we can get to join this club. <laughs> and how many people did I just go, <laughs> it's Ralph Nader. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's call your daughter. I bet she don't know old Ralph I, Nader. I know. Oh, man. But, I, you know, I could do this. I could do this. No, I, yeah. I bet you could not. You could not. I, you could not. I admit right now I could not. I would not. Really? No, no, not even interested in trying. The lunch thing would get me. Having well, to pack there my you lunch go. Then you every can't day. do it. Would be, that would I be forgot trouble. I was going to bring a ham sandwich for breakfast this morning. As soon as we get off the air, I have to have a little something. Yeah. I have to take my back pill. Remember right. Christmas vacation? Yes. So, <laughs> you know, I, I have to go. So, we, I mean, we've been up since four, so I haven't had breakfast yet. Right. You're hungry. So I was going to make a ham sandwich, and I forgot. Uh, I forgot to even bring my ham sandwich for breakfast. Oh. So I ain't packing a lunch every day. That'd be tough. You'd have to get it done, though. You'd have to get it done. Senator Kennedy, did he get canceled? He got he got canceled. Oh boy, I, I, a badge of honor. If you get canceled by Gannett, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're, you're doing, doing something right. You're doing something exactly. Four one one seven FM seven ten Keel. Get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on one zero one seven FM and seven ten Keel. Okay, I just received my brand new Associated Press 57th edition style book, mm-hmm. 2024 through 2026. Okay. Let me read you a real quick passage under the category gender, comma, sex and sexual orientation. All right. Language around gender is ever evolving. Newsrooms and organizations outside the AP may need to make decisions based on timing, necessity, and audience on terms that differ from or are not covered by the AP-specific recommendations. Hmm. Okay. It's ever-evolving. Ever-evolving. All right. More details in key terms. Gender. Okay, here's, here's the AP 57th edition stylebook definition. A social construct encompassing a person's behaviors, self-identity, and appearance. Gender often corresponds with, but is not synonymous with sex. A person's sex and gender are usually assigned at birth by parents. Really? By parents? This is in the AP style book. Mm. Okay. A person's sex and gender are usually assigned at birth by parents or attendants and can turn out to be inaccurate. He's got a little stem on the apple. He's a boy. Yeah. Oh, no, that's inaccurate. He may not identify as a boy oh, okay. and may want to grow up and swim on the women's swimming team because he can't hack it in the men's division. Oh, Mike is pibbing. I can feel Senator it. Senator John Kennedy got canceled by this very subject by Gannett-owned Shreveport Times, amongst other, several mm-hmm. other Louisiana newspapers. Hear his, uh, his response right after the break. 1017FM710Keel.com. Now more breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 1017FM and 710 Keel. On the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline, Senator John Kennedy uh, joining us this morning. Senator, good morning, sir. Good morning to you both. Thank you for uh, taking time to join us. I, ju- I to- told Aaron, I just read a, a little excerpt from my brand new edition of the 57th edition of the AP Style Book that defines <laughs> gender. A social construct encompassing a person's behaviors, self-identity, and appearance. Gender often corresponds with, but is not synonymous with sex. A person's sex and gender are usually assigned at birth by parents or attendants. What? And can turn out to be inaccurate. Senator, this is what we're trying to... This is what we're up against. Well, look. I, that sounds absurd be, because it is. Um, but that's many members of your media today. And my my personal belief is I'm pretty libertarian. You know, if, if you're in America, you're free. If you're an adult and you don't break any laws, you don't hurt anybody. You can uh, you can do what you want, but that doesn't give you the right to impose those values. 
on other people. You can try to persuade them, I guess, but you can't force them. And well, if uh, somebody wants to call themselves a giraffe, okay, you know what? More power to you, but don't expect me to buy into your fantasy and then get mad when I say, no, you're not a giraffe. Well, there's, there's a difference, and our Constitution recognizes it, between speech and behavior. Um, let's talk about the behavior part. We see vi people violating um, their rights to free speech with bad behavior on college campuses. We also see it in the effort, in my opinion, to destroy women's sports. Uh, there's, it is undeniable that uh, biological males, which... The Associated Press and Gannett News says you can't use that term, but I use it anyway. Biological males, starting in the womb, have an advantage over biological females. That's just the way we're, our, creators, our creator made us. Um, yeah, Gannett said biological male and biological female, those terms are loaded language. Yeah, yeah, Gannett... Uh, originally agreed to to publish my op-ed, uh, which I thought was pretty balanced. I did use the term biological male, biological female, which they say is discriminatory. I don't understand why. They published it, and then they quietly pulled down my piece, which said uh, transgender activists are going to, to destroy women and women's sports, and they didn't tell me. And my press, my communica communications team found out about it. And then we asked them about it, and they said they didn't tell me the truth. They kept making up excuses, and finally, they uh, they confessed. And they apparently they got um, they they their people upstairs at senior level looked at it and said we don't agree with Kennedy's commission, and so we we're going to take it down. Wait, Senator, an op-ed? They're, they're not supposed to agree. An, that's what an op-ed is about, uh, right? Your opinion, well, Aaron. I, you hit the nail on the head. That's, I mean, that's why Americans have lost confidence in some members of the media. The purpose of the media is to present two sides and then let readers decide, or as many sides as there are. In this case, about 70% of Americans believe that allowing biological males to play women's sports will uh, destroy the sports, they'll bastardize the sports, they'll skew the results, and they'll hurt women. Now, there, there are Americans out there who disagree. That's their right. Uh, the purpose of a newspaper is to report both sides and then let people decide, let readers decide. That's not what Gannett did. They, uh, they, uh, um, they censored they you. They put their thumb on the scale, and they, mm -hmm. they removed the point of view that they disagreed with. Now, you, you don't go as far to say that, I mean, some people believe that they are born into the wrong body. Your op-ed doesn't say that those people are freaks or anything like that, right? You're just talking about women's sports. Yeah, look, yeah, look I, yes, I don't hate anybody. You know, if, if you're, I'm very libertarian. If you're an American and, and you're, you're free and you're an adult, you don't hurt anybody else, you can say what you want. But that's not what this is about. This is about the distinction between speech and behavior. And I'm convinced that allowing biological men to play women's sports is going to destroy women's sports, and it's going to hurt women. And that violates Title IX of the Civil Rights Act. That's my opinion. Um, you may disagree, but you don't have the right as a newspaper, in my opinion, to... Uh, to uh, to to just pull down an op-ed and not tell the truth about it because you disagree with the op-ed. How far is this going to go, Senator Kennedy? I mean, we've had we already have some um, people participating in sports, and they are and they are making an impact, and it is happening in some places. Are we going to well, stop er this at some point? Well, Aaron, it, it, the president, President Biden, just issued an executive order, as you, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, expanding it. Um, I think it'll stop when when people demand that it be stopped. And I, I happen to believe that the only place, having dealt with the Biden administration for for three and a half years now, the only place you're going to to find uh, sanity and true freedom is in the voting booth. 
I, I don't. I think the uh, the Biden administration is controlled by the loon wing of the Democratic Party, and in the name of making transgender activists and transgender people feel included, uh, they're prepared to destroy women's sports. And I just disagree with that. I, I think the, the the costs are clearly greater than the benefits of what they're trying to do. What we, and I think that's a pretty balanced point of view. Mm-hmm. I don't hate anybody, but uh, we worked really hard for a long time to lift up women's sports, and I don't think we ought to destroy it because of the lone wing of the Democratic Party. Well, and we've gotten away from, well, we've gotten away from common sense, you know, but you know the 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 phrase you know, my rights don't end where your feelings begin and that's where yeah, we that's are a, that's a good way to to put it Mike. look, look I, I don't i don't uh let me say it again i don't know how to say it otherwise i don't hate anybody if if you experience or think you experience gender dysphoria um i'm sorry you know i, I hope I hope you 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 find some peace. Um, you're free if you're an adult to talk about it, say it, declare it, whatever you want to do, dress like you want to dress. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, taking women's sports, which are protected by the Civil Rights Act, and destroying women's sports. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now your op-ed, your op-ed is now available in the National Review. They have published it, correct? They did. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was surprised. I, I, I got a, a text message last night from my comms team saying the National Review has picked it up, which I I, uh, I appreciate it. And read it. You know, if you disagree with it, fine. That's your right as an American. Louisiana, one of several states that has filed suit over this Title IX order by the president. Um, do you... They have a winning case. You anticipate that they're going to be ultimately the winner here? I do. I do. Be- because, again, the First Amendment draws a distinction between, sorry to sound so uh, metaphysical here, but it's, you know, it's common law 101. There's a difference between speech and behavior. Um, the most vivid example we're seeing on college campuses, you have the right on a college campus. Um, for the most part, to to uh, to say uh, I I, uh, I hate uh, I hate Israel. I disagree with Israel. You don't have the right to behave in a way that hurts Jews. And the the the, uh, the same principle applies to your point of view about women's sports. Um, I think letting biological males play women's sports is going to destroy sports and hurt women. If you disagree, fine. You're entitled to, to, to have that point of view. But you're not entitled to burn my house down, for example, because you disagree with me. Mm-hmm. Senator Kennedy, look, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll stay on top of this and see how far it goes. Thank you both very much. You bet. Thank you, Senator. Keep the good fight. 1017 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. Back with McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Yesterday, I saw a story that Cracker Barrel, they, I think they have a new CEO. Mm-hmm. And she's going to go in and shake things up. Yes, she is. And I love Cracker Barrel. Uh, mostly, it's it's the good home-style, country-style cooking Food. Yep, mashed taters, meatloaf, you can get it all. Yeah. Chicken fried steak and mashed mm-hmm. taters and gravy and green beans, you know, corn it's on the hip. cob. It's not hip. Okay, so Reuben, because apparently Cracker Barrel doesn't appeal to the younger younger crowd. I don't know if I'm the younger crowd anymore, man. <laughs> well, you're younger than us. <laughs> I'm going to refer to you. You're my kid's age. Okay. So d- do you like Cracker Barrel? Sure, yeah. I, I very rarely stray away from the breakfast food, but yeah, I, I like Cracker Barrel. But do y'all go? Would you, you know, pick up and go to Cracker Barrel to eat? Uh, we have. I mean, it, normally on the road. 
It's, see, that's yes. one of the things. Exactly. Yeah. You're not gonna. You're not gonna pack up the wife and 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 touring and and come over here. No. 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 And and have dinner at Cracker Barrel. Are you? No. The, the only time I go to this Cracker Barrel is it, during uh, snowstorms. <laughs> like, and we're stuck <laughs> at the hotel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which we have done that a couple of times. Yeah. They are making Isn't some that major funny, changes. That, that, that you think of that as an on the road place to stop, right? But you know, not you, if you live here and you're not going to go over next door and you, eat a cracker barrel, right? You you know exactly what they're going to have. You don't have to think about it. You know, mm-hmm. you get some a chicken fried steak and some taters, and you know, get back on the road. Well, they're going to update their menu, updating their pricing. They're going to remodel many of the locations, make them look fresher, brighter. Uh, more comfortable seating. Okay. Now that I don't, uh, I don't disagree with. See, I think that's going to make it make a change. People will be well, like, "Oh, yeah, it's uh, not how the regular is more comfort a bad wood change." Butt seats. Yeah, I don't know. Those I those, like, those wooden chairs are not not comfortable. They are not comfortable. But are they going to take the rocking chairs the, off the porches? Yeah, the rocking and, chairs and the checkerboards. Are they going to get rid of that? I know. I don't know. Are they going to get rid of the all little, the cool stuff in the lobby? The little golf peg game oh, that you're yeah. right. waiting for your food. The I bet that's going to be gone. I bet that's going to be gone. Are the fireplaces going to be gone? You know what's funny? It's a trend, and people are posting things on Instagram. They're taking family photos, framed family photos, and and surreptitiously placing them on the mantle in oh, Cracker yeah. Barrels. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so wow. their family picture and seeing if, if, it, if, uh, if it's ever taken down. I know the last time I was in there, it was during the ice storm, I think. And I, as I walked in, I said, close to the fireplaces, you can get me. Right. And yeah. so she put me right there. I mean, I was right next to it. And it was. It was nice and toasty. And I just sat there and chilled for a little while or warmed for a little while because it was nice and cozy. But I like all the stuff in the lobby. Well, now, sure. Is it too much? Maybe they could. The store you talking about? Yeah, the, the all the stuff that's in the front. Are I'll, they talking about changing the store? They're talking about you know, freshening it up, making it a little bit more um, appealing. There's no, there's no place else you can buy Beeman's gum. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know the yes. old old style candies but and it's not selling. Their, their revenues well, I mean, are flat. Yeah, if it's not selling. They're not getting their share of the market that they want with the demo they're wanting. Here's some of the menu items they're going to be adding. Just FYI, I'll run through them real quick. Savory chicken and rice. Yuck. No, that sounds good. Slow braised pot roast. I'm down with that. Yeah. Green chili cornbread. Nanner pudding. Oh, I thought they already had nanner pudding. I know, I know right? I did too. Nanner pudding. Uh, shepherd's pie. I thought they had that. And a uh, hash brown casserole. They're going to be adding that. I thought okay. they already had it. Yeah. See, there's nothing wrong with those at all. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. We'll see what they do. I don't know how soon they're going to get to ours in Shreveport, but they're working on a bunch of them. <sighs> Tomorrow's Thursday. <laughs> Love it. Wow. He sure is. Love these short weeks. Mm-hmm. 101.7 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarthy.